What's up guys, welcome back to another video and you may recognize this lady I'm sat with today from a video that we did about healthcare options back in almost two years ago, two Catherine. Two years ago, yeah, yeah. And uh, we bumped into each other at a party the other day <laughs> and we said, Catherine was like, Rich, we should do an update. Yes, yeah, things have changed. We're going to be talking about the best healthcare options for you when you're thinking about moving to this part of Mexico, mm -hmm. it can apply to any part of Mexico, really. Sure, yeah, can't it? absolutely. Um, Catherine, yeah. welcome back. Thank, Thank you, you so much. much for allowing me yeah. to uh, interview you once again. It's good to see you. Good to it's see good you too. You're looking you. well. You're looking really Thank well. Thank you very much. So um, in the interest of, of being um, uh, totally forthright, I do represent a company called SkyMed, which in many cases for um, people who live here is part of their plan. It's not the whole plan. It's part of their plan. So we'll talk about all the different components of putting together a plan. Yes. Because it's very important uh, when people come here to have some sort of a plan because we're not getting younger, <laughs> unfortunately. No. Nope. And... Things happen, things, that, you know, unexpected illnesses or injuries or things like that. And we need to have some sort of a plan for that that won't bankrupt us, you know, that won't cost us many thousands of dollars. And I know that for most people, they think, well, you know, here in Mexico, it's very affordable. And it is, you know, the, the health care here is good. I've used it many times, about five, actually. And uh, hospitalizations, et cetera. By the way, the hospitals look like resorts. They're beautiful. Uh, but you have to have a plan to pay for that. So let me just give you an example. When I had a compound fracture of my leg, uh, the cost in U.S. dollars for five days in the hospital and two operations was 40000 U.S. dollars. And that was in 2016. So I can think of a lot of more a lot more fun things to do with forty thousand dollars than to give it to a hospital but i had insurance private insurance and the private insurance paid for everything except the copay which i paid two thousand dollars for so private insurance is definitely one of your options uh, another option is to self-insure some people do that i know a lot of the canadians like to do that when they when they decide not to um and they go non-residency. Um, and then other people have Medicare. The Americans have Medicare. So first of all, let's, let's talk about self-insure. If you self-insure, you know, for the day-to-day -day sort of things like checkups and physicals and, you know, you get the flu or something like that, you know, the, the copay is going to be somewhere, you know, I'm going to just use U.S. dollars if you don't mind. But it's somewhere going to be around maybe $30, $40. You know, it's, it's, the copay is very affordable. Copay let, is let something that, means, that yeah. you pay to see the doctor. It's just, it's, it's a total amount. That's all you're going to pay. But it's just what you pay is your part of seeing the doctor. And it's just out of pocket. It's not insurance. It's nothing. It's just, you know, the cost of seeing the doctor. And some specialists, of course, are more expensive, but um, it's very affordable. When it becomes not affordable is when it's things like my compound fracture of my leg, when it becomes strokes, when it becomes heart attacks, when it becomes, you know, falling here is, and I mean, as we get older, our balance is not so great. So those sort of things can really run into some six figures. And uh, unless you're very wealthy and can afford that, and some people can, you know, self-insuring may not be the right option, but it is an option. And I'm here to tell you about options. Mm -hmm. Okay. So that would be, um, if, if we, can I backtrack just a little yeah. bit there? So someone comes to you, they say, look, Catherine, you know, give me the best options of healthcare when I'm either thinking about moving to Mexico or I'm already, I'm already in, in Mexico. Mexico. Number one would be COPE. It's like pay as you go. Pay, pay as you go. Pay as you go. Pay for the doctors. I mean, doctor, an appointment with a doctor here, believe it or not, guys, is very reasonable. It mm -hmm. may be anywhere from, say, 500 pesos to, say, maybe 700 pesos. Mm -hmm. well, exactly. What are we looking at? Uh, maximum $40 for a, a, an hour sit down, mm -hmm. an hour sit down mm -hmm. with a specialist. Yes. Around that kind of number. I, that, it doesn't change a whole lot when you go to Guadalajara. It's about the same. It could go up to maybe 1,000 an hour. For a specialist, maybe. For a specialist. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But in general, the the initial one appointment kind of go as mm -hmm. you is a good way. I mean, it's not 
not expensive and it's it's uh it's very accessible and very good doctors here i've been very happy with the care that i received here as well um so but that's one option it would not be my first choice but it is an option and part of it depends on your risk tolerance because everybody has a different risk tolerance they have different health situations they have different financial situations so you know one plan doesn't fit everybody you have to have this is why i, I present all the options because everyone has has a different situation so another option would be um, insurance so uh, there is private insurance available here in Mexico uh, I have private insurance as I mentioned earlier and another uh, situation when I had cancer I mean it we were looking at over six figures and my doctor went to the hospital to to handle the paperwork to be my advocate to help me and it was um, it was wonderful and I really feel like it's important uh, to have some sort of insurance for those catastrophic, you know, sort of numbers that could really wipe some people out financially. And also to have that advocate, mm. you know. There are limitations, aren't there? When it comes to, I mean, we're not going to go into all of them. Feel free to reach out to Catherine when you, if we don't cover, we're not going to cover everything in this video, guys. Right. But we'll cover a lot of things. But if you have specific questions that you would like to send to Catherine and for her to answer that, feel free, send her an email. The email's on the screen and she will answer the questions that sure. you have. Sure, yeah. right, yes, absolutely. I'll share your email. So, there is a when you're looking at health insurance, the limitations when it comes to when right. or how long you know right. when you can open a plan or how old right. can you open a plan up to? Isn't well, it? that's true, and there are a lot of options, and there are a lot of uh, brokers who represent different options. But you know, some of the ones that people may be familiar with are GNP, MetLife. Um, I have AXA. You have to be under 65 initially to sign up so there are qualifications any of these like plans. you said any of the plans well some it depends if you're older then it may be more expensive for your deductible you know it all depends again on your situation and right. that's why it's important to do the research yes you know and look at all the options and have an advocate who will then be there for you should something happen you know you mean a, a good broker or, a, or the person yeah. that sold you the plan yes yes that's right the good the the people who sell you the plan become really your your advocate your, your go-to your people. friend your go-to person yeah. if something something happens i don't i don't speak spanish and you know they I become the, the go-between that's right they become the go-between yeah. so on option number three um, I've heard some people say that they're going to get rid of their Medicare because they plan to, you know, just have their medical here. The problem with that is, is as you know, you can age out of insurance. And there were actually two companies here a couple years ago who pulled out of Mexico completely, leaving their poor members <laughs> high and dry. Uh, well, pe people w who lived in Mexico would buy those okay. insurance companies, and they're grandfathered in as they get older. Yes. But once those companies left, for whatever reason, now these people are over 75, and, it, and, and private insurance becomes very, very expensive. Difficult. And difficult and to get. Difficult to get if you if it can. Yeah. So you mentioned uh, like option three. So you're talking about the American. So I'm talking about the Medicare. Amer the Medicare, yeah. And so th that that's why I want people to keep their Medicare because you don't know what's going to happen. Mm. These people didn't expect these people to these insurance companies to pull out. So a lot of people got rid of their Medicare because they had private health care in Mexico. Yeah, that's right. Okay. Now not a lot of people do. The thing about Medicare though is that you have it. If you're 80, if you're 90, if you're, you know, once you're 65, mm. you have it. And um, I would suggest that you, you have at least, you know, an advantage plan because you can sign up here in Mexico mm. for emergency care. And then what a lot of our members do, and this would be option four, mm. is to use SkyMed then to get themselves back home mm. to Canada where they have their medical paid for or the U.S. where they have their medical paid for. Now, SkyMed may send you via a uh, medically equipped jet if that's needed. A companion goes with you. We fly visitors in. We have all kinds of services around, you know, medical escorts if they need, need a commercial flight and so forth. I won't get into all the details because there's 18 services, but you can call me if you're interested. Just backtracking. Option uh -huh. one would be pay-as-you-go. Uh-huh. 
Option there you one. go. Right. Option two would be take out private health care in Mexico. Mm-hmm. Option mm-hmm. three mm-hmm. would be Medicare. Me- Medi- Medi- Medicare. Uh-huh. Is that how you say it? Medicare. Medicare. Great. Uh-huh. And option four would be um, w- really in a combination with one, two or three. Right. Some sort of combination of those. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Would be the SkyMed, which th- th- that's the company you represent. That's who that's I represent. Right. For many years. Mm-hmm. But I will tell you, in my opinion, the, the best, most comprehensive and cost effective program for Americans is to have Medicare and use Part B, get an ad, what they call an Advantage plan, which costs nothing. They can sign you up for that even here. The Advantage plan. Uh, an Advantage plan is it's kind of Medicare Part B. I'm not a Medicare expert, mm. but I'm just saying Medicare has different parts A, B, C. It's an alphabet soup. But if you okay. have Medicare with Plan B, which is no charge, that covers you here and any, anywhere where you have an emergency. So it's for emergent care. So I'll give you an example. My husband was having um, all kinds of problems. He couldn't walk across the room without falling, and he fainted. I had to get him into the hospital where he was pre-registered with this Medicare B, and uh, he, he had, it turned out to be a bleeding ulcer. He was in the hospital for three days, two nights, he never saw a bill. And then had he needed to have some sort of an operation, which he did not, but had he needed to have more care, then SkyMed would have flown him home for whatever, you know, we, it's a fee, however you do it, if it's three year, five year, whatever, a very affordable fee, by the way. And then he would have been home at, and had Medicare to cover the rest. So really the only cost in that scenario would be the SkyMed fee. That's it. So the Canadians have a couple of options when they decide to move here. And one is, uh, and again, I'm not Canadian. My sister is actually, but I'm not. So I'm not going to claim to be an expert. But I know that for many Canadians, they choose to be non-residents, which means that you're not paying all the taxes for the services you're not receiving because you're, you know, you're living somewhere else. But what that also means is that if you want to go back for medical care, there's a 90-day wait. So what I will tell you is that the experiences that I've observed from Canadians who we had to, to evacuate via a medically equipped jet, when a medically equipped jet shows up in Alberta at the hospital, they take those people in. They don't say, sorry, you're going to have to wait you know, <laughs> 90 days. I can't promise that in different provinces probably handle that differently, but I know it's happened in Alberta and I know it's happened in British Columbia. Uh, But otherwise you do have to wait the 90 days. So some people choose to keep their residency, which means you pay taxes. But at the same time, you know that should you need the care, it's immediately available. Mm. It's not, there's not a 90 day wait. Okay. Okay. So it's really much better to go back to where your health care is paid for <laughs> and you're not paying out of pocket and you're, you're minimizing your risk and at the same time minimizing your exposure, you know, to, to pot- potentially a lot of, a lot of, a lot of money. Mm-hmm. Okay, guys, so that, that's basically the four options. I mean, we've gone into a couple of different scenarios as well. Obviously, we haven't covered everything here, guys. There's a lot of content, lot, yeah. you know, to put, into, um, to, to put into a video. But Catherine's here to answer your questions via email or mm-hmm. give her a call. Sure. Um, what do you, you want to add to this, Catherine? I mean, we've spoke about some options. Are there, are there any recent updates that you've seen, um, you know, um, briefly, if you want to mention, um, any updates that you've seen over the past, like, two years when, it's com- when it comes to policies or when it comes to these, these um, uh, insurance companies or even SkyMed that have, have their services got better? Have you, have, have you seen that over the past couple of years? Have, has it I, have, I, I haven't really seen them get better, and no. I have, I've not seen them get worse. I think it's, um, it's been pretty level. Uh, I do think that a lot more people are cognizant that they need 
to have something because every week, I mean, really, you probably know this too. Every week we hear stories mm. about somebody who's walking down the Catatata. Well, that's the main avenue. And, uh, and they have maybe a little bit of pocket change, you know, to go to the market. They have no ID. Nobody knows who they are. Uh, my suggestion is to always have, have identification on you and always, especially if you're a single person, is to have a kind of three people who look out for each other, who knows uh, where their important documents are, where their keys are. We had, we had a woman with a broken hip. We were trying to evacuate for, uh, to, um, I think it was San Diego, and we couldn't get into her house to get her passports mm -hmm. and to take care of, find someone to take care of her dogs. And so, so there's a lot of components to putting together a plan, and they're not difficult. But I, and I say three people because one person could be in the shower when you call or mm. out of town, yeah. right? So, so have three people yep. to help each other and back each other up. And those sort of things, once you have them in place, this is one of the most beautiful places you'll ever mm. <laughs> see and live. And the community is so welcoming and lovely. And once you have put together this plan, you can live here in peace, mm. knowing that you have your plan in place. Have your vino, your happy hours, the lovely, <laughs> the lovely parties, and you can really enjoy your time here. Yeah. So prepare, guys. Prepare the best. I guess this is great advice, you know. So you're here, if you're here on your own, or even if you're here in a couple, have people that back you up and you mm -hmm. back them up. Exactly. You know, so it's like, right. so we're not, people aren't left. And we all help each other. Yeah. 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 It's, it's definitely that right. vibe down here. I mean, yeah. I've been around this area for yeah. 15 years and it has that vibe about it. People right. do look out for each right. other. Right. Because we become each other's families. Yeah. 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 The, the grandkids and the kids are back. They're in all the back. <laughs> That's right. So here, you know, you have to build your own family once again. <laughs> exactly. Thank you so much for this time. No, it's great. I mean, like I said, guys, it's all... It, Everyone has their own um, uh, case, you know, everyone has their own specific mm -hmm. requirements. And that's yeah. why um, Catherine's here to answer some of your questions about SkyMed, you know, and about really, to, and also giving you some information, you know, uh, yeah, what the, what's the best way things, yeah. to go around it? You know, yeah. it, it's always a question. I know I get it all the time. Yes. That's really why I wanted to bring Catherine back on, you know, onto the podcast just to take some of her wisdom and her experience and share it with you guys. <laughs> so it's uh, thank you so much, Catherine. Thank you. You're it's looking so life. well, my love. Oh, thank you. you know? Thank you very much. La <laughs> last time it was my birthday and he sang, but it's not oh. my birthday, so he's not going <laughs> to sing today. But he has I a very good voice. <laughs> <laughs> She's very sweet. <laughs> guys, so. it, thank you all very much for watching the podcast and listening. Uh, take care of yourselves. Feel yes. free to reach out to um, Catherine. I'll leave her contact information at the bottom of the page and in the description, okay. guys. And I'll give a bit of description of SkyMed in the description of the video and their, oh, okay. you know, and their website That's and all fine, the rest yeah. of it. So okay. people can right. check that out as well. Take care of yourselves, guys, and see you in the next video. And come to Mexico. Hasta, Hasta luego. luego. <laughs>